sometimes I get the feeling that Luis J. Gomez is a bit conflicted. That's the way I got. I get the feeling that Luis J. Gomez is a bit conflicted. He's a very conflicted individual. Yo, big up Eric C. I appreciate you. Will you be surprised when Aston Villa finishes <laughs> above United this season? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not happening. That's not happening. That's not happening. As much as they are... No, that's what, that's what happened. I doubt it. Very, very doubtful. I think they'll end up imploding again um, like they did last time. I think they bought pretty well this, this summer again. But I think they won't... No, I don't think so. I doubt it, man. I doubt it. I doubt it. I have more faith... I have more belief that maybe Chelsea will finish ahead of us than Aston Villa. Yeah, I think Chelsea probably have more chance to finish ahead of us than Aston Villa. I think Aston Villa will have what it takes to hold on in the business end of the season. Not happening. Um, but anyway, what was I going to say? About Luis It's a big ROC. I appreciate you for the super chat, brother. Um, I feel like Luis J. Gomez is a bit conflicted in that he clearly is somebody who, despite all of his kind of flirtations with the homeless cats and the sticking it to Brendan, I've always got the feeling that Luis J. Gomez actually does want to be a part of that crew. He wants to be in the kind of cool guys club, but because they don't like him for whatever reason, he then has to adopt this kind of persona where he doesn't care about LA, doesn't care about money, doesn't care about Netflix, wants to be the most you know, obscene comedian and say risque stuff and cancer culture. All this stuff. Like he wants to be that kind of guy because that's the only choice he has because the other guys don't want him in his crew. And I think a really good example of that, as Brandon is saying here, is that for some reason, I don't know why it is, but Rogan just doesn't fancy the guy. And I think the good thing about Rogan not fancying him is that it's clearly a thing that Rogan is kind of like observed from afar because Rogan's had him on his show. He's had him on his show as part of a Skankfest thing where him and the rest of the Skankfest guys went on Rogan. He's had him on the show solo. And Rogan has clearly taken a look at him and said, you know what? Of the three of you guys, I don't like you in particular, Luis J. Gomez. And he clearly has made an effort to stay as far away from that guy as possible. He invites Dave Smith on the podcast. He invites, what's his name? Um, Big J. Okerson on there, right? All the time. But he's never really re-invited Luis J. Gomez. And clearly... I think that is an indication of how he is viewed in the industry in general. I don't know why it is the case. I don't really give a fuck, really. It's probably comedian nonsense, backstabby stuff that's going on there. But clearly, these comedians don't really fuck with Luis J. Gomez. That's why he has to kind of adopt this anti-LA thing. And obviously, the natural place to go to that to kind of play to the audience and kind of get some easy, cheap laughs and good bit of engagement is to kind of go and ingratiate yourself with the fire and the kids over it and kind of stick the boot into Brendan. But I don't think he really has a problem because he wants, obviously, I think because he sees Brendan as a Joe Rogan's friend still and he would love to get Joe Rogan's approval. So he's always kind of had the kiddie gloves on Brendan and also kind of played both. He's kind of played both sides of Brendan. He's been the guy that's sticking it to him and also been the guy that's kind of making excuses for him and shit. And clearly from before, Luis Gomez came out and essentially tried to distance himself from the fight and the kid guys, tried to distance himself from like the things that he said about Brendan in the past. And obviously the fight and the kids, some of the guys tore him apart. They tore him to pieces. So he then went on his show, Rap, and decided to start copying Please um, and started to try to explain himself and why he basically was trying to walk back all his previous comments about Brendan um, in an effort to kind of, you know, be his fucking friend again because he invited him to fucking Skankfest. Really and truly kind of show... Again, I don't really give a fuck. Like, these guys, you know, they're my friends. I'm not impressed by what they do in the slightest. I don't think what they do is like the, you know... Because I think a lot of these guys have this idea in their head that they have like the best job in the world. It's like not everybody wants to be a stand-up comedian. Some people just like laughing at your jokes. Some people like laughing at you because you say dumb things. Some people like hate watching you. Like these guys legitimately think that everybody on earth would love to be a stand-up and chat shit on stage and I don't know, drink fucking liquid death and look the way they do. Like not really. I'm not impressed in the slightest. So I don't care, right, what he does. But I find it fucking hilarious how this subreddit got him so shook <laughs> that he had to walk it all back <laughs> and say, look, guys, I'm one of you guys. I'm one of you guys. I promise. I promise. So I'll play the whole clip and I'll say my side in the end. Twitter. Think Twitter as far as arguing. Yeah, you're yeah. just fucking you're there to argue. So I start arguing with people and then people like people know when I'm on a flight that they.
You start to bait me. So then I start <laughs> yeah. to have a... But it's the same guys every time. So we go back and forth and we start arguing. Well, you have regulars that you argue with? Yeah, of course. Sparring yeah. partners? Of course. But now, see, this has all turned into... This whole thing has now spawned into the homeless cats, the fighter and the kids subreddit. They're fucking furious at me. What? One of the guys that trolled me um, had Luke Thomas as his profile picture. Nice. Right? And Luke Thomas is an MMA Who's journalist. That? He's an okay. MMA journalist. Oop. Yeah. And the guy said something to me at one point. He was like, he was like, dude, you're fucking like Brendan Shaw. And when somebody says that to me, I'm like, you're just fuck. you're just showing your ass. It reminds me of back in the day when somebody would be like, you're fucking Opie. You're like, dude, like, how are you not more embarrassed if that is like your frame your th- of reference? That's your thing. Like, that's you. You have a, a, a picture of Luke Thomas as your profile What's picture. What's Luke Thomas? Because he had a beef with Brendan Schaub. So they called okay. him the, the, the fucking the CEO of P.F. Chang's or, or, you know, the top chief homeless cat or whatever else it is. So I was like, and so I made the point. I was like, dude, you're a fucking loser. You're using another man's profile picture as your thing. I was like, just because your entire life is a fighter in the kid's subreddit, right? So I tweet that at him. They've picked up on it now and they're fucking not happy. They think Uh-oh. that I'm attacking them. I'm not attacking. Let me make something very clear because they're going to see this. This will yeah. be up in an hour. Ready? <laughs> I'm not. I don't care about you at all. I, I love the fight. I, I, I lurk the fighter and the kid subreddit. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah. However, if your entire identity is that subreddit, you're a fucking loser and you should actually eat a bullet. That is crazy. If you are making your profile picture other men, because they made fun of Brendan Schaub, you are a fu- like as yeah. bottom of the fucking barrel as it gets. That is way more of a fucking loser than Brendan Schaub, right? A bit rich coming from a guy that's got a fucking, was it a platform called Gas Digital? <laughs> right? This guy legitimately thinks he's in any business to call anybody losers or lame when you've got a network called Gas Digital. Are you are you kidding me? Are you for real? Gas Digital <laughs> He thinks he's making his own fucking Netflix with his fucking shit, right? With this fucking creature next to him doing a show, him, his other friends, like who the fuck listens to this shit? Gas Digital is like, come, anyway, I'll let it play, I'll let it play, I'll let it play, I'll let it play, I'll let it play. Go, no comedians think Brendan Schaub's funny. <laughs> it's boring <laughs> to say that at this point. <laughs> Why do we need to fucking say, like, that's the thing, like, I, I'm not, I can't be, I can't just hate on a fucking comedian because there's a sub reddit that hates him so fucking much that if you don't trash this guy, now they fucking hate you too. That is fucking whack. That's his- no, 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 no. He's misrepresenting the subreddit and everybody in general. From from I've been a part of that subreddit for a very long time. And I can say with honesty, a lot of the disdain that c- comes from that subreddit for comedians overall is that for the longest time, that subreddit, even f- before me, before I even got on the fucking, before my eyes were opened, they were saying, this guy is a fucking pos right when it comes to brendan they were calling him out from ages ago they were calling out fucking brent joe rogan before it was cool they were saying all of that stuff right and the thing that was annoying people on that subreddit was that it wasn't just the fact that um he was a rubbish comedian no that they always say that they always kind of do that as the excuse or because he's bad at comedy no it's because he's a demonstrably terrible person and clearly has been given everything on a silver platter and still fucking fumbled it, but then acts like he fucking did it all by himself and not because of his famous and rich friends. That's the fucking thing that really gets everybody annoyed. Like, they just can't understand why these comedians wouldn't want to call out the fact that this person is a clearly a horrible person, clearly has kind of jumped the fucking line in terms of how you meant to do comedy the quote-unquote right way, got given opportunities that probably they didn't deserve, then got the opportunities and fucking fumbled them, then acted like they were better than everybody, and done all manner of things under the sun. The, j- just think about this one, to being thing, to, just to be honest, right? There are some people out there in the world who exist, right? Regular people in this world who exist, who if they hear about somebody, like friends, like I've got, I've got, I know people, specifically these kind of people, right? I know people specifically who don't play when it comes to their boyfriend, husband, wives, or girlfriends. They don't play with their partners. They don't play around. So if you make a joke about their partner, if you suggest something, whatever it may be, it could be, it could be a fight in your hands you could legitimately start scrapping your friend like they don't fuck around when it comes to that sort of stuff and those same people are the same ones who 
won't allow their friend to cheat in front of them. Like if their friend, they're going out somewhere in a ship and they're trying to get a bit messy, they're going to have an issue. They're going to pull you to one side. They're going to leave. They're going to be pissed off. They're those kind of guys that they exist. If those guys exist and they heard that Brendan Shaw was the type of person that would allegedly, right, fucking slide into Kalila's DMs when she was going out with Bobby Lee in an effort to fuck, don't they have the right to kind of think, oh, he's a piece of shit? Outside of the fucking comedy, just in terms of how they live their lives and what they think is right or wrong, just hearing that one story about him trying to slide in Kalala's DMs, wouldn't that be enough to them to think, you know what, I don't like this guy? That should be enough to regular people, right? Cool. But for some reason, these comedians think there is the only thing that people fucking <laughs> don't like about Brendan is the fact that he's not funny. No, nah, most of you guys aren't funny. But that guy is like... I don't know how to describe it. He just, for some reason, he just has the ability to be so fucking unlikable as a human because of the human things that he does. The lack of fucking, you know, one, you know, the lack of what you call it, owning up to mistakes or willing to fucking being called out or the thin skin shit, the suing of unique, the cheating stuff, the, the alleged, maybe the stealing of the jokes, if you believe that kind of thing, the not paying artist type of thing. There was a guy on there that did that. Remember the subreddit? He posted something about being scammed, the copying of fucking artwork I've mentioned before, um, the cancelling of the shows last. Like, again, we, we make a joke about the UK tour and stuff, but my guy cancelled that shit with like two weeks' notice. Didn't give his fans any heads up or anything. All these things should be enough to make people think, you know what? I don't like you. But for some reason with these guys, it's not enough. As whack as it comes. And I think they got the, the Legion of Skanks subreddit banned. Oh, no. It was banned this morning. I oh, know. I'm on Reddit. I, I, yeah. I have the app and I will post as well. Um, I post on all the subreddits. That no, I, I post under Puerto Rican Rattles or PR Rattlesnake or VPR or Rattlesnake or, or whatever else it is. Um, yeah. And I think by the I think trolling is funny. The, the, the guy that was trolling me, we're like literally going back and forth now being like, yeah, dude, that was pretty funny yesterday. Right. And, but yeah. So now the, the the homeless cats are mad at me. So now I have to spend today taking shots of Brendan Shaw in order to get them back on my side. So guys, at any point, please Hell just yeah. fucking throw them out. There, right? <laughs> are you going to fight him? This guy's a fucking dork, isn't it? Most of these guys are so lame so corny so dorky in every like in every fucking um in every way possible really like honestly in every way possible no one's really bothered if you like brendan or don't like brendan it's just this clear evidence of just wanting to be like liked Do you know what I mean you want to be part of the cool club you really truly want to be brendan's friend but you know too much water under the bridge way too much bad stuff has happened you're probably besmirched in joe rogan's book that's why brendan does really fuck with you that heavy and that's kind of where you're at now but he really does want to be a part of that crew that's basically what's happening here and he thought he could try to use the front of the kids subreddit to kind of you know get in that way and be friendly with them then when it came time to sell tickets and be a little bit controversial and whatever he booked brendan for that thing and now you're trying to be brendan i don't know it's just fucking lame just do what you're gonna do but this whole fucking game he's playing is just pathetic really to be fair it's gang first. I'll beat his fit ass. Hell yeah, dude. Are you kidding me, dude? And I'll punch that rapist Chris Dillier right in his fucking face. Karen, you want to go, bitch? Toe Rogan? Punch I don't think yeah, that these people will ever like Brennan Schwab. I don't, Brennan Schwab could fuck. I think he literally saved a child's life and they were like, fuck you, dude. You should have let that child die. Hell yeah. I think that's a story that happened, if I'm not mistaken. No. Again, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, he doesn't look what he's talking about. So, the, the the story about the car crash, from what I remember correctly, um, from what I remember, sorry, not correctly, from what I remember, the issue wasn't more so people, first of all, people don't believe Brendan because he generally lies. Let's just put that out there. But that's what they don't want to say. Brendan lies about literally everything for the most part. I'm not sure what bits are true, what bits are not true. There's a clip I might play later on of him saying that him, him and fucking Ludacris he was next to being lying to be the fucking host of Fear Factor and it was down to him and Ludacris. Like, I don't know, he just lies for, for a fucking living. So the default reaction to most of Brendan's stories is that he's lying. Then after further investigation, it was proven that there was a car crash, something that, that event did happen. But people were trying to surmise whether or not Brendan's version of the story was true. And even if you listen to Brendan's version of the story, it's not the best version. Of the, it's not, it doesn't paint him in a good light essentially he saw the car crash was driving by um on his way to go to dinner with his wife and on a date night they saw what was happening the wife told him not to stop and just go he then decides to stop essentially essentially pulls the kids out of this burning car allegedly um 
but as he's describing the story, he's calling the kids fat and shit, right? <laughs> he pulls them out of the car, gets them all well, gets them all on the side of the road or whatever, makes sure they're okay, and then jumps in his car and leaves before the cops and police come because he doesn't want to give any evidence. He just wants to carry on with his day. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> then he goes to this restaurant before they go to the restaurant obviously because this is a family that fucking is obsessed with social media they take out their phone and take a picture of themselves in the car before they go in i think or whatever or after the car crash and he's clearly wearing a sparkling clear sparkling clear fucking white t-shirt but in the story when he mentioned it he was like oh when i was going there i had like gas all over my shirt and like he was you know because from the stains and the smoke of the car and stuff but when he took a selfie of himself in the car his t-shirt was completely clean so we don't know what bit of the story has been fucking you know sprinkled with some salt bay fucking salt and spice on it but clearly his version of events doesn't paint him in a good light one and number two probably isn't the entire truth <laughs> and then when people did further investigation the woman that was allegedly on the scene that saw him there and basically corroborated the story was somebody that i think who said i think sean mccorkle said that that person was on facebook and had a mutual friend in brendan from back in the day bro that story isn't as black and white as it seems there's too many holes in the story and it clearly isn't what he's trying to paint it out to be but when it did get proven that he was there at least everyone gave him the credit but people are going on as if oh if he said kids are a burning car they won't give him credit for it nah it's just the way that he told the story made him sound like a douche and also there was a lot of holes in it wasn't there, a thing, know, wasn't there a thing where he like fucking stopped on the side of the road and like there was a car on fire and he like got out and like helped and people were like dude what a piece of shit <laughs> I don't know the lore, but Doug, I swear to God, <laughs> I, I, maybe I'm po Shannon. Do you am I am I missing something from this? You're correct. He saved the lives of four children who had been <laughs> in a car accident. That's crazy. <laughs> and they were like, "Fuck <laughs> you, dude. dude!" They hated him for it. Hell yeah. There's nothing this guy could do. There's no going back. He needs to. In all fairness, the driver of the car did veer off the road because they were watching Gringo Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> so I call that one a wash. What do we? Anyway, you get the point. Um, I don't think this is true. I don't think there's anything that you could not do. Like everybody's redeemable. Everybody has opportunity to kind of, you know, um, everyone's opportunity at forgiveness, whatever that thing is, or just to rewrite their narrative. But unfortunately, you know, let's just be honest. Most people don't change. The guy is in his forties now. He's got two kids, another one on the way. He's married and shit. He's settled with his social group. He's settled in his career. Um, for the most part the incentive to change isn't there because he's been successful despite in spite of all the you know terrible personality traits that he has and the things that he's done to people over the years and whatever it may be so there's no incentive really to change so it doesn't make sense to change now just because there's some people on reddit that don't like how you act because for the most part they don't really have a say so in your success or lack thereof so this idea that he had you know so this this idea that we're never gonna the people will never change them isn't true it's more so because he will never actually change himself because why would he because he doesn't actually think he does anything wrong anyway that's another thing as well he doesn't actually see the wrong that he does because you know clearly as you can see from that bobby lee um interview that he had when he went on tiger belly he still didn't get what was the reason you know he still didn't get the part he played in that whole affair he was still on there fucking telling him to define bullying and shit like all of that stuff was fucking was the biggest insight you need to see on his brain and how it works and it's not a bad thing everyone's allowed to be the way they are but like to kind of make it seem as if the final kids subreddit guys are the crazy ones and they're the unhinged ones they're the obsessed ones is fucking wild considering that that place only exists because that guy brendan basically is a douche like if he stopped being a douche that place wouldn't exist simple as that like he's the one that fucking provides non-stop content for that subreddit they don't go out looking for anything they're not even malicious they don't even do like the, st the stuff that fucking you know other detractor communities of low cows do where they go and start investigating this and getting records of that they don't do anything they just sit there listen to what he says and clip it <laughs> that's all they do they sit on that subreddit watch his content clip it and upload it that's all they do they don't go and look for stuff they're not going to you know looking for his bank records they're not doing anything they just listen to what he says and calling out the bullshit that he says all the fucking time that's all it is really and that's not even to talk about the funny side of things that's all but anyway what can i do um 
Yeah, Luis Jace Gomez is fucking lame. To be fair, he's I've always uh, I've always got the feeling that he's a little bit corny, a little bit duplicitous, and two faced and shit. And this is a clear example of it. Personally, if I was Brendan, actually, to be fair, I'd be very wary of someone like a Luis Jace Gomez. P- clearly, I'd be very, very, very wary of him because he spent a very long time, a very long time, insulting him, saying some crazy shit about him, and then suddenly, when he wants to book him for the show, now he's trying to be his best friend. Then when the Reddit, you know, attacks him for being Brendan's best friend, then now he's trying to fucking twerk for the Reddit. Like, this guy's all over the place, man. If I was Brendan, I'd be very, very worried about associating with fucking Luis J. Gomez, man. He's a bit dodgy. Little, 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 little bit dodgy. But, you know, what do I know? Uh, What do I know? What do I know? Moving on, actually, yeah, this is a... Big up the friend the kids up, Reddit. This is a good fucking... um. Yeah, exactly. It's game bread footballer. He puts it on a plate for the subred. Exactly, man. Come on. No one's doing anything for that guy. Self awareness is under zero. Exactly, Le Potomain. I, I agree with you. Slimy bit, bit of dog. Exactly. Itaski loose is the crab in the bucket of a papa. Yeah. Sometimes I, I have sympathy for Brendan. I really do because I think he's very malleable, I think, kind of person. I think he's only doing what everyone else is doing in the scene. And I think that industry is just full of so many fucking snakes. Like they're all so fucking jealous and envious of each other and comparing ticket sales and Instagram followers and views on YouTube and who got what special, who deserves what, who got on Rogan, who didn't. It's just awful. There's hardly anybody just sitting there just focusing on the actual art or, you know, feeding the fans, making a good show. Like, when's the last time you heard a fucking stand-up comedian talking about putting on a good show? Except, that's what I'm saying, except for Bert. Except for Bert, who do you hear about who speaks about putting on a good, fun show for their fans. They're all worried about fucking tickets, who went on where, impression views, booking. It's, oh, it's horrible. So it's not, It's really no, no surprise that a guy like Brendan, like, is the way he is, in a way. He got in there and just kind of copied everybody around him, and that's what everyone else around him does. Do you know what I mean? They talk out both sides of their mouth. They speak about you well in the pod. Then in the green room, they're talking about how you don't sell tickets and shit. Well, horrendous people, man. Horrendous people, really. Horrendous. Which is why I understand the Matt Rife success is quite sweet because he just made it on in his own little bubble. He doesn't have to fucking, you know, twerk for these guys and be on their podcast to sell tickets. He's just in his own little bubble with his own little crew doing what they do. Even if you don't like the comedy, you have to respect that thing, which I respect a lot. The fact that he's just been able to kind of do it by himself without their fucking help and shit. 